जी जी मोक्षदारायणमो नम नम समय साराय स्वानुभूत चकाशते चिस्वाय भावाय सर्वभावादे अग्नतिरंजनाजन शलाकया चक्षुर्मील ये नस्म श्रीगुरव नम अनंत अनंत भाव भेद थी बरली भली अनंत अनंत निक्षेपे व्याख्या सकल जगत हित कारिणी हरिणी मोह तारिणी भवादी मोक्षचारिणी प्रमाणी से उपमा आप्यानी जैने तमरा खबीते व्यर्थ आप जमती मई में मानी से अहो राज चंद्र बाल ख्याल नहीं पमताए जीने स्वर तणी वाणी जानी तेने जानी छे गुरु राज तणी वाणी जानी तेने जानी छे ओम नमः शिवाय देव ओम शिवाय देव ओम श्री सुदात्मने नमः जय जिनेंद्र अम टुडे इज अ uh december 7 2020 monday and we are continuing our class on a uh, uh, atma siddhi shastra uh today before we start atma siddhi shastra class and we are on seven stanza today is a very important day today is a actually in indian calendar it's a uh, kartik vad सेवंथ सातम कार्तिक वत सेवन और सातम वट हैपन ऑन दिस डे अवर गुरु बिलो गुरुदेव श्री कांजी स्वामी ही ऑप्टेन ही जस्ट हैज दी स्टॉप ब्रीदिंग एंड टेक्निकली वी कैन से इट्स अ डेथ but the the better word use is called deh vilay or deh parivartan means uh, his body change to other body his soul change the body from this life to other life um why it's so important because gurudev sri kanji swami gave us lots and lots of teaching in this modern time the revolutionary teaching for jainism 100 years before jainism was jainism was in down in the dump and everything was related to the blind rituals if you have done samaik if you have done upvas if you have done pratikaban and then you are a jain and if you have not done those thing then you are a non jain you are not called jain and you will be kind of outcast in the society also in those dark times shrimad ji was born and shrimad ji had a intense amount of uh, knowledge i mean he's he's he has extreme sharp intellect and through his intellect actually he's in a childhood if you look from shrimad ji there was a lot so for hindu influence was there but then he came in contact with some of the jain people because his uh, uh, maternal side was jains uh, and that they were jains and they had neighbors were jains and all kind of thing and he came to uh, he got exposed to jainism and with his sharp intellect he said this is what it is this is a true thing this is a true religion true philosophy and he understood very at extremely early age he understood and at age 24 shrimad ji ended up getting the samyak darshan 
but to our bad luck, he has a very short life of 34 years only. And so he, with his extreme intellect and total darkness in the society about the principles of Jainism, he was afraid that because of his short life, he is not able to change anything, but he had a vision that if I just leave behind the leg legacy, then somebody will pick it up in the coming future and propagate the principles that I'm laying down. And true to his understanding, it did happen. Simaji lived for 34 years. And after few years of his, uh, 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 if, after few years of that, he's gone. Gurudev Sikhanji Swami was born. And Gurudev Sri, he became proponent of Jainism and he was an extremely fearless leader. He was a Jain monk, but the ritualistic society, he just did, he revolted against. And he realized that in that uh, congregation, he doesn't fit because he was bigger than the congregation. So he left the congregation and he said, I'm a householder, I'm not a monk now. And he started giving lectures on Jain principles. And he emulated Srimadji's teaching also during his lectures, etc. Actually, after 40 years that Srimadji wrote down Atmasiddhi Sastra, about 42 years, after 40, 42 years that Srimadji wrote down Atmasiddhi Sastra, nobody knew, very, very few people had access to that thing. Actually, when Simaji wrote uh, the picture that we see in the back, that Simaji is writing that uh, Atmasiddhi Sastra right now, for example, and he made four copies and gave it to four people who were worthy souls and also strictly instructed them not to distribute to the other people because people will make misuse out of that. After several years of, after uh, Simaji is passing away, uh, his uh, brother Mansubhai, he published Atmasiddhi. Again, it remained dormant. There was no problem, no, no, no publicity, much publicity. But Gurudev Sri Kanji Swami came. And first time after 40, uh, uh, 1952, it was written, and 1992, so, no, yeah, about 40, 42 years down the road, Gurudev Kanji Swami gave lectures on Atma Siddhi Sastra. And some of the thing that we learn right now is the Atma Siddhi Sastra stanza along with Gurudev Kanji Swami's explanation of Atma Siddhi that we are learning. So this Gurudev Sri Kanji Swami, he remained for 91 years. He had the age was on his side and he had a tremendous impact on the Jain society at large. And uh, he propagated Jainism. He propagated Atma Siddhi Sastra. He propagated Samaisa and uh, Pravachansa, Niyamsa, Astapahal, Panchastikai, Mokmakrakashik, etc., etc. Several, several, several scriptures. And he gave the lecture 9,200 plus hours of our lectures are recorded. And that too, on last 10 to 15 years of his life, previously, unfortunately for our unfortunate, that there was not recording available. If you remember, and uh, uh, I don't know whether Sachin will know it or not, but uh, um, Nimisha and Shefali, they remember that you had your dad had that spool, spool type of a recorder was there, big spool, remember? And then he will record that one. And those kind of recordings were initially available and they recorded 
and then the cassettes came and the recording was done on the cassette, etc. Now they are converted to the CD, to the DVD, to the MP3, to the USB, to the uh, 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 Wi-Fi and everything. So right now everything is available online. This Gurudev Sri today, 40 years back, today he passed away. And that's very sad day for us that uh, he is no more with us. But the amount of literature he left behind for us, this lifetime is short. If, we, if one wants to digest everything that he spoke about, this lifetime is too short for that. But still, we are going to do our, our best to understand what messages he gave. The, I mean, uh, he, uh, 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 he died, his passing away was 12, uh, uh, 28 November 1980. Some of you were not born even at the time, I guess, uh, or we were just born. So um, uh, the 28th November 1980, the, he passed away and he had a prostate problem. And today you just say, what a big deal, prostate. You just go into hospital outpatient in morning, you go and uh, afternoon, you just come back home and that's it. No, that was not, that technology was not that advanced. So he was taken from Sungat to Bombay and then complications occurred and all kind of thing. And ultimately he went in coma and uh, end up dying. So 28th November, 1980 was his uh, uh, passing away day. It was uh, Kartak Vatsatam, which is Kartak Vatsatam today. So 40 years back it happened. Now, 16 days prior to his dying, I mean, dying is a very puny word, but I mean, lack of better words in English language, that's what I have to say, but I can just say passing away. So 16 days prior to his passing away, he was sick already, bedridden already. He was in Songar. And in Songar at that time, there was Nandiswar Jinalai. Uh, there was a Silanyash, means a groundbreaking ceremony was going on. And hundreds of thousands of people had gathered there. But last few days, the Guru is not able to give any lectures and everything. So everybody is involved with that uh, 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 happy occasion of the uh, uh, groundbreaking ceremony for that uh, Nandiswar temple building up there. Few, a few mumukshus, few, few, few people were hanging around in that uh, uh, class uh, in that uh, in that uh, uh, classroom there, where, where uh, Guru Devsi gave lectures every day. Suddenly Gurudev comes out from the room and he starts speaking. And that's the last time he gave any kind of a meaningful uh, uh, message. He gave absolute great information in that five minutes or whatsoever time he talked. What he talked was, it, it, what he talked is called the Antim Deshna, last message. What he said in that last message, one substance cannot do the work for the other substance. Ek dravya bija dravya nu kartu nathi. This is the most important principles of Jain, Jainism, which Krupalu Dev Sri Srimadji also propagated in, through his writings. But Gurudev Sri kept Tom repeating in the uh, in the lectures continuously, and so he said, one substance cannot do the function of the other substance. One substance is having a mode which occurs at a given time. No, a, a given substance can have a mode, can come at particular time, can come at particular place can come with particular type of a uh, 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 particular pro uh, process. And whatever is supposed to happen, 
that particular mode will come at that time at that area at, by, by by that process and uh, it, it is occurring no matter what means what he meant to say a mode which is supposed to come will come no matter what if a time comes for living being to leave the body a time comes for a person to die it will occur no matter what and that is called krambat pariyar that is called the the uh, modes coming in the sequential order it's a big big topic and somewhere on the line we will touch this topic if you are supposed to attend today's class no matter what you will attend it is supposed to happen then you will do it and if it is not supposed to happen you will do absolute preparation but if it is not going to happen it won't happen so this principle gurudev sri propagated which really shook the whole world apart he was extremely solid in his presentation and on personal note i will say that i did not understand this one at all many years back but i had the intense desire to learn this one and you know what happened it was supposed to happen that my mode for knowing this thing was supposed to happen at particular time at particular day at particular place and it did happen how it happened i wanted to know what is the uh, what is this uh, 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 mode coming in the sequential order krambat pariyai i had such a intense desire to learn intense inclination to know and you know what happened you'll be surprised you'll be surprised nimishan sefali's grandfather when he was in phoenix nimishan's dad had recorded lots and lots and lots of lectures from uh, uh, grandpa nimisha's parents have given us that set of those cassettes they were sitting somewhere in the corner of the house that particular day i was so intense one intensely i had that inclination that i found those cassettes and exactly this cassette that i want to hear nimisha's grandfather my shifali's grandfather he's describing and i learned and i said oh my god what a great principle in such a simplest way there the, your your grandpa explained so i'm indebted to your grandpa for me learning that principle which gurudev sri gave and on that day on 12th november 1990 1980 in songad if something is going to happen no matter what it will happen that particular day i was supposed to know those thing it did happen that particular day those cassette were sitting in my place for last few years nothing happened when that particular time came i found them out i listened to that i under oh, what okay so so gurudev gives us the second principle that krambat pariya i mean so mode coming in the sequential order what does it mean if for you in general suppose something unforeseen thing happen something which i don't like it happens to me in in generally there is going to be a blame game and depression and frustration 
why me why me but the true seeker he will accept those negative uh, surroundings negative circumstances negative situation and he will say that is supposed to happen it is happening so i'm not going to worry about it so that means your anxiety is much less and you pass through this bad time too so that was second time he second thing again. then he said origination cessation and constancy are all three independent thing the first principle he said all the substances are independent then this the third principle he says all the modes their origination cessation and constancy they are they are also independent in the sense kanji swami is a first one who gave independence of even a smallest mode a mode lasting for a fraction of second fraction of second is not a right word but for a blink of an eye blink of an eye innumerable time units pass by innumerable means billion million trillion quadrillion and beyond in scripture it says maybe 10 10 to the power of 29 or 10 to the power of 49 all computer guys you can find it out what that number is that many samay pass by in a blink of an eye and in such samay there is one mode occurs in me what's a mode just like if you're on the ocean front and you see a wave coming and breaking coming and breaking coming and breaking when the mode when the wave breaks down then the water goes back into the ocean similarly this mode is coming and going coming and going coming and going it originates and there are uh, 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 has cessation occurs origination occurs cessation occurs for that one let let take one example of a gold i have a gold coin with me and gold coin i decided to make a necklace out of it so necklace mode originates from the gold i wore it for you wore it for a year two year three year now i don't like it so you went to the goldsmith and the gold was I mean, uh, 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 necklace was broken down and it went back into the gold so one mode of the necklace originates one mode that, uh, dissipates and again goes back into this gold from the gold now you made the ring so ring originates you didn't like it ring got destroyed gold back gold went to the gold so origination of the uh, uh, necklace origination uh, the cessation of the necklace origin uh, origination of the um, 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 uh, the, the uh, ring cessation of the ring etc etc occurring and gold remains constant similarly soul has a origination in one samay we talk about uh, 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 a necklace and ring which can last for long time. here one samay originates disintegrates originates disintegrates and again goes back to go so that time all those three events are independent and this is the i mean uh, this is a pinnacle of independence of the substances that uh, gurudev sri put forward which was there in the literature it was hidden somewhere it was not given prominence and he brought it to prominence then he said no next principle he said instrumental cause is simply present does not do anything to the uh, 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 action occurring in the pr principal cause instrumental cause can be present but cannot do anything to the principal cause its presence is important but cannot do anything so such are the principles he gave on the last time he speaks he speaks this truth and uh, 
So uh, th these are the things that he spoke. So these are the messages that the Gurudev Sri Kanji Swami taught us. And on this 40th day of his uh, 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 passing away anniversary, we are indebted to him for giving us all these knowledges, etc., to us so that we can further our spirituality. And in this life, it is possible for us to get a Samyak Darshan. It doesn't make difference whether you speak Gujarati, English, Hindi, whatever. It can occur with true understanding. So I, I just say, he's a Sadguru for me. He's a true teacher for me. But I can say only that he is a true teacher for me, provided I'm the true student for him. In the nation, a teacher is given the best teacher's award, not because everybody are failing in her class. Everybody, they are successfully coming out from her class. And that's why that teacher gets best teacher's award. So here, if I can just say, Gurudev Sri Kanji Swami was my guru. Simaji was my guru. If I want to say those words, then I also have to, I have to become true student. If, if I'm true student, then I can have him saying, said as a true teacher. So this is our responsibility. We just further our knowledge and walk on the path, pathway that they have shown, that will be a true kind of a, um, um, offering to our beloved Gurudev Sri. Having said that, we will just go to the now, our regular class that we have it, and we'll start from wherever we were left, left out last time. So we'll start from there. This one. Okay, so last time we were on this slide, so let's talk from that and uh, keep going from there. Self will nature means swachan. He just did whatever he thinks true. He just keeps on doing that. Whether it's right or wrong, he doesn't care about it. So those kind of people, then he is acting in an, and he's superficially showing that I'm, I'm, I'm a religious person or anything. But in fact, he doesn't know a single thing about it. He, he, that means, Swachang means whatever way he wants to behave, that means, he has a faith deluding state, means he has darshan more, means he has a faith related to the alien objects of the universe, means he has a faith to the nearest part from the soul is a physical body and he believes he is the physical body. So self will nature, he is uh, having the wrong faith, mithyatva, or we can say faith deluding state. Then obstacle means pratibandh. Once some, somebody gets obstacle on his path to the spirituality, that means he has a conduct related deluding state. Means if you just take this uh, uh, faith, faith related deluding state and conduct related deluding state combined together, it's called deluding state completely. And if we wean over this deluding state, First, taking this guy, uh, let me bring the colors over here. First, we just take uh, 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 deluding state, we just take these guys out, and then we take these guys out. That means we end up with the passionless state, and ultimately one ends up with the omniscience knowledge. Such type of altered inclination is not my true nature. These are the altered inclination. And I say, these are not my true nature. I am separate from the body, etc. An inclusive of att attachment, etc. state. All such alien objects are free. I'm free from them. Physical body, etc. I'm free. 
and uh, the, the, the influence of attachment state, anger, deceit, ego, greed occurring within me, they are also alien objects and they are not my true nature. That's what we end up believing. I am the pure and powerful soul substance. Not only by speaking, but I also experience that way. I just have my behavioral changes occurring in such a way that it is all become soul centric attitude that I just believe in the soul and I act accordingly. When I believe this way, suddenly my little examination will occur. Maybe I get some discomfort in the physical body. Maybe diagnosis for COVID occurred to me. Maybe my diabetes goes out of control. Maybe whatever. And at the time, my exam will occur whether I believe that I'm the pure and powerful slow soul and I'm separate from the body, do I really act that way? If I act that way, that means I pass this exam. Such type of determination occurs due to constant reminder, who am I, who am I? What's my true nature? Why am I here? Why do I have association with the alien objects of the universe? All those uh, determination that I have constant reminder telling me I'm separate from all these alien objects. Also ends up knowing that material karma type of impurity is not my true nature. The, the material karma are ma ma matter objects and I'm the conscious element. So material karma and me, we are entirely separate to entities. I have no part of the matter object. As long this pen is separate from me. Similarly, a body is separate from me. Similarly, material karma are separate from me because all those things are matter object. So those kind of determination occur. Such soul tries to remove all the impurity from within. When I understand such type of thing, then I'm ready to remove all the impurities from within me. So these are the things that we have to continue. What is this stanza saying? To have self-realization, the, the, the primary eligibility means I have to have passion, I have to have a, a indifference towards worldly object. And I should just give up all the unnecessary thing. So those kind of attitude, when I have it, then I'm ready to remove the impurities from within and I will end up getting some adversion. Blind ritualists, again, on the departing thoughts, last few slides over here in the class today, um, uh, Dev, see he again reminds us that if I'm the blind ritualistic, then I can perform, that means I, I believe that I'm performing body's activity, means fasting or eating state, he has ego for that. That means he does not have even milder form of uh, uh, toxic emotions without ever reducing anger at such a stage and attachment towards the body. There is not even auspicious inclination present. I mean, my anger is not gone. My deceitful state is not gone. And my attachment to the body remains the same. And in that case, when I'm doing fasting, etc., does not mean it is having any auspicious inclination because I still have anger, I still have attachment to the body. That means I had a karma bondage going on. So even if I'm doing fasting, etc., it does not help me. So here again, belief and belief and belief main. The main weight is given to the belief. If I believe that by doing fasting today, I'm doing something good, then it's a wrong attitude. And that means even I, I, I will not get even some auspicious inclination there. 
if the aim is to achieve the eternal state of the soul and is having the milder form of toxic emotion then renunciation etc states are called helpful in obtaining right faith what over here it says over here sorry it says that uh, first thing what is my aim over here what's my aim today over here in this class right now my aim my aim is to obtain samyak darshan means i want to experience my eternal soul substance so that's my 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 my, my what, what is my aim is to have uh, achieve my eternal state of the soul substance if that is my aim if that is my aim then milder form of toxic emotion milder form of anger deceit ego greed they are okay there there is nothing to worry about it because ultimately those milder state will make help me to obtain right faith means my aim is a eternal true state when my aim is that way then my toxic emotions are becoming less and less in intensity because my aim is to the eternal soul substance so toxic emotion intensity is becoming less and less and that means those kind of state will help me to obtain my right faith but when my aim has to be very high in a tv advertisement come in the us army aim high you have to high aim then you can achieve those aim but if you don't have any aim at all you are just rudderless uh, rudderless uh, boat you are going nowhere in the ocean transmigratory ocean but only having auspicious but so over here over here he did simran ji gave a good start for us that listen if you uh, if your aim is to achieve the eternal state then milder form of toxic emotions they are okay to obtain right faith but if i have only auspicious inclination milder form of uh, toxic emotions without experiencing the eternal soul state then is not called religious act is called blind ritualistic thing aim is to have to the eternal the aim the aim is aim is to the eternal self and associate milder toxic emotions and emotion performed yeah and, and performs the act and not considering such an act as religion then says to be the means of over here what it says third bullet it says if your aim is a eternal soul substance then your act will occur in that direction only if your aim is to achieve the highest score in the exam and you 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 boys and girls there you have gone through those situation i want to have a highest score in my sat or mcat or whatever when your aim is so high then naturally your activity will be going in that direction only so first you have to do the you have to decide the aim i'm preparing for my exam i don't know whether i'll take the mcat or i'll take the lsat i don't know which exam i'm going to take it then your preparation is useless because you have no aim so when when your aim is fixed your aim is experiencing soul substance then whatever activity you do will lead you to that direction remember when you when you put the water on the ground where does the water go when i'm going in the jogging in the street here sometimes on the side road, side road i can see water flowing where is that water coming from 
I don't know where it's coming from, but because it's a, it's a slope is there, so water will go down the slope no matter what. Your aim is to obtain right faith. Your water will flow in that direction. Your effort will go in that direction and you will become a successful person. Oh, Mr. Lord has shown the path of logical reasoning, nyai, with a multiplicity point of view. We just talk something short, a short thing about nyai. Nyai means logical conclusion. A given fact, the logical conclusion, what is it? So logical reasoning is we are talking about it. It said that soul is eternal, non-doer, all knower, without any actions, it's a pure, without any auspicious, innocuous inclination. This is the nature of the eternal soul substance. Free from all the vices, free from all the divisions, free from all this mortal state. That's the eternal soul substance. To obtain such eternal soul substance, free from all this purple bullet uh, uh, acts, means it's a pure gold and pure gold. There is no changes in the gold at all. Pure soul and pure soul, there are no changes in the soul. To obtain such soul, one has to know, one has to know the nature of comprehensive perspective. And with the help of guru, one is able to know such soul state. I want to know the eternal soul substance. So first I have to know it with my own study. And also guru will lead me to that direction. Guru will lead me to the direction only if I'm ready for it. If I'm not ready for it, nobody is going to help me. Self will nature and ignore uh, with the ignorance, one cannot obtain real nature of the self soul. When self will nature is there, Swachand is there, he can just do whatever he wished to do it, then he will never ex experience a soul substance. For that thing, one has to prepare himself. One has to go deep into the spirituality, learning, etc., etc. Logical, logical reasoning with a multiplicity point of view, anekan swarup nyai vidhi means we are talking about logical reasoning and also try to learn multiplicity point of view. So two points are given. Logical reasoning is a one point and multiplicity point of view other point. So what it means, what's a multiplicity, first of all, let's say what's a multiplicity point of view. What is multiplicity point of view? Well, here also is a truth I will accept. Here is also truth I will accept. Here is also some truth I will accept. I'll accept everything from everywhere. That is not multiplicity point of view. Multiplicity point of view means a given substance, listen carefully, multiplicity, multiplicity point of view means a given substance has two opposite things residing in that given substance at the same time. A given substance has two opposite things residing that is called multiplicity point of view. For example, a soul is an eternal and soul is a transient to transiency and eternity. Both are residing in a soul substance. It depends what perspective you are looking at. It. For example, I am the father and I am the son. Wait a second. How can I be father? How can I be son? I can be one thing only. No, at a given time, I can be a father. At a given time, I can be a son. From my dad's perspective, I am the son. From my kid's perspective, I am the father. So father and son, exact opposite thing, residing in the same substance at a given time. 
that is multiplicity point of view. A soul is eternal and soul is transient in nature. Both are exactly opposite, transiency and eternity. Non-Jains, they say, these Jains are nuts. They don't know what, what they're talking about. Why? Because sometimes the Jain will, a Jain will come and say, hey, soul is eternal in nature. And other day he'll come and say, oh, soul is transient in nature. Come on, guys, make up your mind. Don't come out with, don't come and confuse us. So that's what non-Jains are saying. So we say, you know, it's too difficult for you to understand. You won't understand. Because when I am a father, at the same time, I'm a son too. When I'm eternal, at the same time, I'm transient too. From substance perspective, I'm eternal. From gold's perspective, I'm eternal. From the necklace perspective, I'm transient in nature. So transiency and eternity remain together. That's multiple point of view. It's a root, a root of the Jain philosophy. Jain philosophy stands on the three major pillars. Jain philosophy stands on three major pillars. And those are the three major pillars are the one that we are talking is one is multiplicity point of view. One is a um, 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 non-violence and one is a um, um, non-possession. So these three principles one has to understand properly. Anekant means one substance mean, anekant means one substance and many attribute residing or at a given time two opposite things operational in each substance. That's called multiplicity point of view. So there is only one substance present. There is only one substance present, but two opposite things are residing within. And one, one, many, eternal, transiently, etc. opposite things residing in a given substance at a given time is called multiplicity point of view. So one has to have pretty good understanding about this multiplicity point of view. This is the core principles for Jainism that we have to have understanding about it. This is the one of the sentence Srimadji has said, which is extremely powerful sentence. Anekant bi ekant aise nij atma ki prapti ki bina anya koi hetu se upkar nahi hai means in Patrang 702, Rasi Chandra ji says, that a, a, a multiplicity point of view is useful only when one has a narrow vision of making eternal self as an aim. What it means, it's a very loaded statement. Actually, to, to explain within one or two minutes is not a, 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 it's an injustice towards this thing. But again, we'll try. I'm talking about Eternity and transiency present in a given substance at a given time. I believe that way. I talk about it and all the things. But if I, my aim is not to the eternal soul substance, then this multiple point of view just for the talk itself has no value. If this multiplicity point of view takes me takes me to the eternal soul substance, my aim gets dire directed to the eternal soul substance, then and then it is helpful. So practically it is there, simply speaking those kind of things does not mean anything. So then what's dialectic relativism? Um, spoken language about the nature of the multiplicity point of view is called uh, relative di relative uh, uh, dialectic relativism or siadvad. These words will come when you go through the literature, when you read and everything, or when you listen to some of the lectures, then the siadvad will come. Siadvad means, siad means for certain perspective, vad means to speak from certain perspective, I'm a father. 
from certain perspective, I'm the son. So at the given time, I'm the father and I'm the son. To speak that way is called dialectic relativism. It's not possible to, dis to describe a given thing at a given moment. There is limitation of the spoken language. I have a limitation of spoken language. When I am the father at the same time, I'm the son, but I can't speak both the things together. I need to speak in sequence. I am a father from my son's perspective. I am a son from my dad's perspective. So there are two sentences to be spoken. Then we can give the dialectic relativism, but we have we cannot give, speak both the sentences together, even though both entities are occurring at the same time. So that's called um, if there's a limitation of the spoken language, and that's why dialectic relativism will come in the picture. Therefore, a given point is made primary, and the rest of the rest of the points are made secondary. When I'm saying I am a father means my son's state is becoming secondary. When I say I'm the son means my fatherhood becomes secondary in nature. So when I'm saying that I'm the soul, I'm the eternal soul means the transient modes occurring in the soul, even though they are present, they are made secondary. When I have the modal perspective, I am the more, that means, that means my eternal soul substance becomes sec secondary at the time. It don't, it's not gone, it's just primary, it's just sim simply made secondary. While making one thing primary, the li listener knows about the rest which are made secondary. Listener also knows, when I say I'm the father, means listener understand that I'm son also. He understand that one. I also understand that way. And because we both understand that way, our business carries, keeps on carrying. But if I say, hey, I'm the father. No, 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 you are the son. And we, then the two people start fighting. Verbal fighting, verbal, verbal argument. Means they don't know dialectic relativism of Jain principles. So these are the final points that one has to understand. Therefore, in the spoken word, there is the use of the word from certain perspective. From certain perspective, I'm the son. From certain perspective, I'm the father. So these kind of things we have to understand. So these are the, 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 this, this stance are basically ends over here in which the uh, Simaji says, that you know to to realize the soul substance you have to have renunciation and indifference to the worldly life as a, as a prerequisite but when i'm doing renunciation when i'm indifferent to the worldly life and people say oh look at this guy he looks peaceful quiet a contented person, he probably has a Samyak Darshan. And this kind of boasting, when I hear, I get stuck in those rut and I cannot make progress. So Simaji says, nothing is going to happen to you because you have not realized your soul substance. So until, until all this stands up to seven stanza, Simaji kept on saying, that blind ritualist and uh, the, the, the um, dry knowledgeable person, they have no room in the spirituality. Having said that, next stanza onward, now Simaji is going to say, what is the nature of the person who has only the desire to obtain the eternal soul substance. What are his characteristics? And all those things, nitty gritty things. First, he just gave all the negativity with the um, ritualistic or dry knowledgeable person. And he just gave warning to all those people that, hey, be careful. You want to progress, you have to give up those things. Then he's gonna say, how much, what's the characteristics of a true soul? 
what's the characteristics of the aspirant soul so those are the things that we'll be discussing from next week any questions so far yes anything okay then we'll do the closing over here okay all right Jeswarup samaja vina pamyo dukha anan samaja yute pada namo sri sad guru bhagavan param purusha prabhu sad guru param gyana sukadam jene atmo banani stene sada pranam देहता जेनी दशा वर्ते देहाती आ प्रभु जी न चरण मो वंदन अगणी आदि आदानी न चरण मो वंदन अगणी जय जिनेन्द्र जय जिनेन्द्र